Back in 1975, I turned on the TV and just by accident turned on the PBS and there it was, the sixth lecture from Leonard Bernstein at Harvard. And I sat there watching this thing with my jaw dropped for two and a half hours. Uh, it was an amazing, amazing experience. And it, uh, it has colored and conditioned almost everything I do as a teacher. In his second lecture, which uh, is on musical phonology, he makes some really interesting comments. He says, for example, <clears throat> that uh, melody, da 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 dum, is a noun. The chord you put under it is the adjective. So da 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 dum. Going to the tonic there, if I play the tonic chord there, uh, the triad in root position, it's going to feel really done. If I play the uh, triad uh, and I put, say, the uh, third in the bass, then it's going to feel less done. If I put, uh, say, uh, uh, the minor chord, the sixth minor chord under there, it's going to feel different. That is, say, the chords color the melody in the same way that you can say sweet love, bitter love, unfulfilled love, honeyed love. Uh, the adjective modifies the noun, just as the chord modifies the melody. So, music has adjectives and nouns. Cool. Verbs? Where are the verbs? Ah, says Bernstein. Rhythm. Rhythm puts nouns and adjectives in motion in the same way verbs put nouns and adjectives in motion. I thought, Lenny, that's pretty cool. You know, when you say, Music is the universal language. Yeah, you bet it is. It's got nouns, verbs, and adjectives that everybody knows and everybody feels. He goes on and talks about, uh, talks about art, the, the arts. He uses poetry. He uses uh, painting. He uses, obviously, music. And says that at the fundamental level, all arts are the same. They all operate by the same principles, tension, resolution, etc. And so to understand one art is to understand another. That was a revelation to me. And so when I began teaching poetry at Berkeley, being both a musician and being in love with words, I started making the connections. And I've been teaching and developing methodology of teaching poetry by comparing it to music or to dance or to film editing or to film scoring, any of the arts. And it's been a revelation not only to me but to my students. One of my regrets in life could have been, and I fully expected it to be, is that the way that I teach poetry, the way I teach writing poetry, would be gone with me. That that whole thing that I've done and created, that whole step-by-step -step methodology for really digging into the deepest level of what poetry and what art is, uh, would leave with me. And then I got a call from Berkeley Music saying, you know, we'd really like for you to do your poetry course, and what do you think? And I paused the appropriate five seconds as though I was considering saying no and said, could work, <laughs> and put my hand over the phone for a minute, jumped up and down four or five times, and then got back on and said, yeah, I think I can do that. And so I've written the course, and it, uh, it uh, came fairly quickly. I wrote it probably in about uh, uh, six months or so. Uh, and then we did some filming for it and so on. It's been, uh, it's been really fun, but uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, the work that I've been doing for the past 30 years on this course is now at least in some fixed form so that uh, people outside of Berkeley can now take the course. And I think it's a wonderful extension because, again, this is berkeleymusic.com. And so most of you have musical interests of some kind. And so this seems to be a perfect extension. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm delighted uh, to, to be able to do this, 
And uh, once again, thank you, Lenny, uh, because without, uh, without that two and a half hours on that uh, Sunday in 1975, I don't think I'd be sitting here today. So that's sort of my gift to you. Go forth and order that DVD set. I don't get a cut on it, but it will change the way you look at things, uh, as will this course.